Hello and welcome back. I wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, I was... Well, I had to help my mom take down Christmas lights in the Christmas tree this weekend. So, I didn't get a chance to work on this that much, although I did do quite a bit. And I had to make a... an order with DigiKey last week. I thought I did it on New Year's Eve. Anyway, the parts came in today. As it turned out, several of these resistors were bad. Not just the one that burned up that I replaced here. The only, there were, there's four two watt resistors in here. The only one that was close to being in tolerance was um, the voltage dropping resistor. It's a 10K here. Let's see if you can see that. And it's reading at 11K and that's, I'm okay with that being a little bit high considering that the voltage here is usually around 122 volts. Although better than when I was in Texas where it was generally 129. Anyhow, I still have to connect this ground wire. I don't know why I keep not doing it. I think because I was going back and forth on whether I wanted to replace this or not. So, let's see, there's... I am totally blanking out. Oh, this is the 220. Oh, okay, so this was the 220. I've been forcing myself to memorize the color codes because I don't know why I've always been lazy <clears throat> about it. Probably because I could always grab a phone or a calculator, but... Anyway, I have my little cheat card and I'm, like I said, forcing myself to read it. Anyway, so this 220 was reading at 67. And... Did I already drop it in the bag? I think I did. Okay. And this resistor here, the... Uh, shoot. See, now my memorizing the colors went straight out of my head. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cheat. So that one is um uh, you're all probably sitting there yelling at me with the answer. Um That's not right. Did I put the wrong cap in? Uh, did I put the wrong resistor in there? Oh, brown green. Okay, so here's a. That makes more sense. <laughs> <coughs> here's an argument not to get uh, colored resistors. Um, that brown on there from from back here under the fluorescent light looks gray. Um, anyway, so that's uh, a 1.5K. This was reading, um, well, first of all, you can tell it burned up because, A, it's cracked. <laughs> Guess it'll focus. Uh, anyway, this one got toasty. The colors are, are uh, the only color you can make out on it is brown. It looked like brown, black, black. So, that is a, uh, so that one reads at 85, 85 ohms instead of 1.5, and that is the, uh, it's a bypass? No. Oh, it's just, it's a filter. And the other one, the black, red, the uh, 1K, where'd my go? The 1K here was not out of tolerance. Uh, it was 25% was, uh, above, which, you know, we're used to with these uh, carbon, old carbon resistors. Anyway, so I just went ahead and replaced it. And I got all of the caps done. I obviously did not restuff them. These things were just, you know, I had such a hard time. Well, I'm sorry about that. Um, I didn't realize I hadn't cleaned off my memory card. 
and it filled up. Alrighty, so I did not end up restuffing the caps because, well, look, I just picked one up and it's all goopy. So not only, it's just there was wax everywhere in here. And in fact, there's still some in places. See some there. And then at one point I got kind of grossed out because it looks like earwax. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so no, I didn't restuff them. But just like every other radio, I've kept them. <laughs> so here's my bag of components there that I removed. Uh, I was going to mention uh, uh, to... Oh, that was another thing. Anyway, the three-legged capacitor it basically it's it's a, it's a pass through so let's see it was in this way so this uh, this lead here just passes through to here and then this one and then the capacitor is between these two so what I had done let's get that out of the way and uh, there's a link in the description to the Philco radio.com tech tips so I just basically put a wire from here to here because the 22k bridge is over to here and then uh, put the 0.01 between here and ground and that's what oops sorry you couldn't see any of that um, there and then here to ground that's what they described to do on the Philco radio page now the reason for this, you'll see if you go ahead and go to that link, you'll see the reason for this was, well, <laughs> somebody else had said they were saving a three inch piece of wire, which they were doing, but uh, according to the page, by uh, doing this, it, it uh, uh, lowers the, uh, it's an induction thing because it's an FM circuit. So uh, I guess we'll find out how well it works without it. What else did I do? So all of the caps are done. And I redid this one, I just said that. Uh, got lost there because I had to go clean off my memory card. So, two things I did that I want to make note of in a video especially. This cap here and this cap here, they're .01. They were both stuffed underneath this wafer, uh, the switch and they went to a grounding point down here buried underneath the switch and uh, several wires and um, so I moved them to this grounding point here so it was this one this point oh one and this point oh one they were stuffed underneath the switch because I could get one of my clippers down here to clip the wire the uh, clip out the caps but there was no way I was going to be able to get I guess I could probably have gotten my soldering iron down there but there would have been no way for me to to well I don't know I would have had to take this off which I, I suppose I'm gonna need to take this uh, tuning condenser off of there to clean. I'm a little nervous because these coils here The uh, FM coils, you know, they're pretty adamant in here about not Disturbing them as it is if I have to do an alignment I got to figure out what I'm going to do because to do the alignment This is one of those things that requires one of those tools that uh, Dennis In one of his videos a long time ago. I think he was working on an RCA it takes one of those, uh, one end of the slug has got a ferrite rod on it and the other end has got a brass rod and you pass them through here and depending on what comes up, I think on your, oh, I'm not sure if it's the oscilloscope or if it's on the, uh, the VTVM, then you have to bend these slightly, separate the whatnot stuff. I. Well, I'll do it if I have to, but um, anyway, stuff that freaks me out, I guess, because I've never done it before. So, all the other resistors are either right uh, on, one of these resistors is right on, which scared me, because usually they drift or they're not quite, you know, exact on value anyway. 
Some of these have drifted, but they're in really hard to reach places, so I'm going to leave them. Also, there was an 882K FM. Let's do the FM circuit. It is. Geez, I was all prepared for this too. FMRF screen, it was open. So I went ahead and replaced that today, also, when I uh, put these resistors in. Now these power, these uh, X1, Y1 power filters, they were grounded here at this grounding point. But because I knew I was waiting for these, I grounded them to the lug right next to where the power comes in, the lug where the uh, they connect to the inbound power. So I, I don't know if I need to move those, but I left a tail here sticking out from the ground just in case. But I needed to, I couldn't have them be in the way, so this way, uh, moving them here, I could uh, bend them out of the way. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start cleaning the switch a little bit, because I have not done that yet. And considering that <laughs> there was wax all over this thing, it looked like a candle barfed in here. So, that was my... <clears throat> I just didn't feel like dealing with the wax caps. So, I guess I just will never be a radio museum rest store person. Well, I don't know. I guess if somebody was paying me enough money, I would take two weeks to recap a, a radio. But anyway, I'm going to flip this up because I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. Now, Chris Shipman had brought something up that I had noticed as well, and I'm sure you guys did, that you can't see. Okay, everything's mirror land, Brent. All right. So these... Philco decided that, I guess at some point, to start putting their transformers in these cans. And let's take away everything on my tape. About to shove my thing on the floor. Okay, so i wondering if they this thing, I think they potted this with wax as well, because this obviously got warm. I don't know if you can see this or not, but wax has leaked out from underneath the perimeter here, and it uh, lavaed itself down the front, which is just making for so much fun for me to remove the wax, uh, to clean this up. And this is the tone control. So I haven't cleaned the tone control yet, but I'm certainly hoping that um, wax did not find its way in there. It doesn't look like it did. In fact, uh, when the wax ran down, I mean, my head's not in the way. When the wax ran down, it sort of went around where the control is. So I'm thinking possibly the tone control acted a bit as a heat sink or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was cooler. It ran around it. <clears throat> but it would also explain why there's wax all over everything on the inside as well and dripping down the wires. Now the other thing that's annoying with these caps that they put on here is they're soldered. It's, it's soldered here, not all the way around like welded, but there's a, it's soldered here. And on this side it's, actually this side is soldered over to here. That's it. So it's soldered in these two places, which is very irritating, <laughs> like I said. Good thing I didn't need to get in there. So I started doing a little bit of preliminary cleaning. I'm going to flip this up, I hope, and show you. I think you can see part of what I did. So, if you can see under those buttons, I got this portion here pretty clean. 
This had this is where the rust was, which you may not have seen, but it was pretty pitted with rust. So um, I was gonna also say that I went out to buy some evapo rust over the weekend. And I'd like to know, it, I haven't bought a, a gallon in a year, but last year, or last uh, November of 2014, no, December of 2014, early December, $13.99 a gallon, which I thought was expensive as it is. It's $23 a gallon now. So uh, I went decided I'm going back to um, navel jelly. Now, an interesting thing I was going to point out about navel jelly as I ramble on, Home Depot was out of the Loctite, which is what I usually use, and I needed Gojo, so I went over to O'Reilly, and they had Permatex, and I've always used the Loctite, but I'll tell you what, this stuff has got to be at least twice as strong as the Loctite, because not only did I it burn like crazy when I got some onto my on my finger, the Loctite would burn, but it took it a few minutes. This stuff burned quite quickly, but better yet, it got rid of this rust in less than an hour, and it was pretty rusty. So, I have to say, I don't think I'll be going back to Loctite at the same price, so. Uh, no, actually, this is more expensive. This is eight ounces for seven bucks, or eight bucks instead of 16 ounces for eight bucks. But anyway, I, I gladly paid the double the price. So, another thing is dealing with this here. You can see where the, the grease that Philco used seeped down onto the flocking. Now, uh, I've been working to get the grease off of here. And, of course, uh, I'm using alcohol, which does leave a, a little bit of a stain. But what I discovered is if I actually just wet this whole thing with alcohol, or at least a big portion of it, the stain goes away or it's all all this uh, looks the same I mean um, it gets rid of these little watermarks also it cleans the felt so um, what I'm going to try to do is use dry a dry lubricant I had some CRC or at my mom's house there's some CRC spray lubricant but I don't want to mask all this off if possible because I don't want to pull the flocking off so someone had uh, <coughs> recommended um, I don't know the brand now, but it comes in both a spray and drop, so I figure I could use some cardboard and paint it on here and paint it on the back. So, anyway, I got a lot of cleaning to do, but um, after I do get the switch cleaned up, I think we'll try to power this up and see what happens since everything's recapped. And I'll use one of my little 4 ohm speakers that I've used for testing before since uh, this uses a permanent magnet speaker at 4 ohms or 3.5 ohms, which is close enough. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and upload this video. I'll do some cleaning. In the next video, we will uh, power this up. Thanks again for watching as I find my remote, and I will um, see you guys soon.